Hi, everyone. This is Johnny Enoch, and I wish you Jana Lotus. Welcome to our first episode of the Inner Light Mysteries podcast. This is a weekly update we want to do with all of you about our latest esoteric travel adventures, what books we've been looking at lately, as well as we want to bring on our friends and researchers to tell you about the latest discoveries with extraterrestrials, ancient mysteries, and paranormal encounters. But you know, I want to say, I absolutely love working with Shushana because not only is she brilliant, she has a background in archaeology and history, as well as she uses archaeolinguistics, you know, going back and forth between Hungarian, German, English, Latin, Italian, or comparing these ancient languages and how they fit into decoding this esoteric symbolism. Shushana, how did you get involved with this sort of work? First of all, welcome everyone. And I would like to thank you for the beautiful words. Um, well, yes, I remember that I was five years old when I was sitting in front of the TV watching a documentary about Egypt. And it was especially about Tutankhamun. And I was so amazed about everything what I saw. And I immediately asked my parents that, who are those people who can touch these things from the past? I was so excited to see these things. If I would have seen these things again, right? From the past lives. So they told me that they are the archeologists. So I decided that I have to deal with this. I have to do something with this. So I was actually 12 years old when I was uh, reading the books of Graham Hancock. And I have to tell you that this is absolutely a lifelong fascination about mysteries and history. And this is a dream come true that we can work together on it. I absolutely agree. I mean, there's so many of you out there who have had the same experience as you, Jana. You've picked up one of those Graham Hancock books, you know, Fingerprints of the Gods, or when you look at the mysteries of where the Ark, you know, is, which Graham, of course, believes it's in Axum, exactly. Ethiopia, you know, but the these sort of mysteries we're, we're all looking at, and I believe they enrich our lives, and they allow us to see that there's more to all of this. And, you know, one of the things that has always been fascinating for Jujana and I, we both love books. And uh, what was very surprising when we started to work together is that we've read a lot of the same books. And uh, I would look at her bookshelf and she would have, have them and they were the same as in my collection. So we thought it would be fitting to share our top five favorite books with all of you today. Uh, and of course, as we go forward, with this show, we're going to continue to share them. So I thought we would just go down uh, the list here as starting with book number five and and talk a little bit about that. So Jujana, do you want to start with the first book in the series? I, I, I love how you, you hold it up and get the great view for everybody. It's it's wonderful. Uh, so Journey of Souls. This, this book is incredible. Uh, it's by Dr. Michael Newton. Of course, uh, in the background, many of you know, I've, I've worked with clinical hypnotherapy in the past, doing regressions with people. But if you don't know about this book, I highly suggest that you pick it up. Uh, as, as you can see, it's got many different cases. It's very easy to read as you go through it. And that uh, the backstory with Newton is that he is a PhD clinical uh, psychologist and hypnotherapist. And uh, essentially, he was an atheist. He was a skeptic. He didn't believe in any spiritual subjects. And by accident, uh, using Ericksonian hypnotherapy, he brings someone in to do a session with them. And he finds out that they have these World War I memories. And he's able to confirm that this psychosomatic pain they had in their leg actually was war injury. He calls up and he's you know, an amateur historian himself. And he finds out that this injury they had and what they saw on the battlefield very much aligned with the past life memory. He goes on to do countless numbers of cases. And he finds out that we all have memories of what it's like to pick our bodies you know, we can see our lives on these different screens as we go through this process. And he starts to find that we have a soul name. There's such things as a council of elders or a council of wise ones. Uh, and he goes on to not only do journey of souls, but destiny of souls. And his uh, clinical hypnotherapist practitioner's guide is very important also. But again, this being out of one of my top five favorite books, uh, it's a very important book. Jujana, what was your takeaway when you looked at Journey of Souls? Well, I really liked in this book that uh, you can have, um, if you read this book, you can see a different perspective 
of different souls and different levels, how uh, they live uh, the soul level, how they experience the other side. It's very interesting to see that there are differences with a very experienced old soul or a new one. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. That's one of the greatest things you see from this book. Uh, they talk about, you know, a beginner soul, intermediate souls are an advanced soul. And you start to see that this, you know, a soul that comes here that might pick a life where they're like a celebrity and they have everything is really easy. That might be a beginner soul, but, you know, some souls have picked very difficult or challenging lives. These could be more advanced souls. So you start to see that we've also incarnated in all kinds of different places out there and that the Earth is a school, like the Buddhists teach. It's a school, not so much a playground, but um, an amazing book. And of course, we can't talk about this book without bringing up uh, one of my favorite series that I absolutely recommend to people is uh, there's a book series by Garnet Schulhauser. And uh, I was very fortunate to get to write in the uh, beginning of his new book, Dancing Forever with, uh, or Dancing with Angels. But uh, this is Dancing Forever with Spirit, of course, his dancing series of books is amazing. I highly recommend this series. It's my favorite spiritual book series of all time. And uh, Garnet series, it goes into the fact that he was a lawyer for over 30 years in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And he uh, very much was, was very much in the same position as Dr. Michael Newton. You know, he didn't believe in any of these sort of subjects. And um, the uh, one thing that was very interesting about that is that one day he, he goes outside and he encounters his spirit guide as a homeless man named Albert. And he starts to say, hey, you know what? I know everything about you. He's able to basically tell that to him with a glare. He looks over at him and then he gets taken out of these nightly out-of-body experiences. And why I put these two books together, these two books really should be read together, this series um, these these should be sold together. In fact, I think it's fascinating that he starts to see the exact same thing that Newton found out doing regressions on people, that you have a council of elders, uh, which uh, Garnet calls it the council of wise ones, but uh, in Newton's books, he calls it the Council of Elders. And they go back and forth with parallels with uh, picking lives to what it's like to review your lives. You know, some people talk about the Akashic Records. So you go and review your lives in Akashic Records. Well, he actually takes it a step further. And, and uh, Garnet talks about these rooms that you can go into. You can hop in uh, with his spirit guide, takes him there and says, you can wave your hand over this like sphere and you can hop into anybody's life. And there's no secrets on the other side. There's no shame. There's no guilt. There's essentially, you know, it goes through this, these parallels where he says you can go and enjoy music and concerts. You know, John Lennon's up there giving a concert. Uh, he sees people on earth that have been very, um, you know, popular being on that other side over there. So uh, again, uh, he delves into the subjects of extraterrestrials and the afterlife, all kinds of interesting stuff. I highly, highly recommend those. Uh, what was your takeaway with Garnet's uh, work, Susanna? Well, I was absolutely amazed by this book. And what I really love that probably all of you have ever asked from yourself that what's the meaning of life, why you are here. And this book is talking about that there is always a reason why you are here. And this reason is picked by you, by yourself. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And uh, the other thing that really stuck with me is that, you know, if you make a mistake in your life, and I know, you know, we're all perfectly imperfect. You know, I've you know, I've made mistakes in my life, you know, and you, you always find this, this message that comes through there that it's never too late to get back on course. It's never too late to become who you were meant to be, and that you have more help than you would ever know. Uh, you know, that's the most amazing message. that's very, very powerful in there. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, I have to give a plug over to Daniel Brinkley as well. If you're reading these books, definitely check out his as well. You know, his message is that you're all a great and mighty, powerful spiritual being with dignity, direction, and purpose. Uh, get saved by the light as well. Uh, so uh, not, again, I know that we've kind of broken out of our top five by referencing other books, but we have to get to book number four. Now, uh, I can't say enough good things about this author. I'm a huge fan of this author. Uh, he came from Tennessee. His name is Ted Andrews. Uh, I highly recommend you guys check out his work if you never have. This is 
how to meet and work with spirit guides. Now, Ted Andrews, if you guys have never heard of his work, when he was alive, the late great Ted Andrews, he wrote, you know, books like Animals Speak, you know, Enchantment of the Fairy Realm, all these incredible books on uh, metaphysical development. But I would put him up there uh, as a modern day sort of uh, Paul Foster case or Rudolf Steiner. He's um, he was prolific and he referenced Manly P. Hall. He referenced many people like this. His exercises were so easy to work with. He published the great amount, of, uh, you know, the great number of books with Llewellyn, but then went on with his wife, Kathy, to establish something called Dragonhawk Publishing. Now, this book, I, I find, is really great. It's called How to Meet and Work with Spirit Guides, and it has very simple meditational exercises and stuff on how to become aware of your guides, to become aware of the, the, the help that we do have in this lifetime and to get signs and messages from them, even if it's you know finding a parking spot for you or working with you. Um, I find it's just a really healing, comforting book. What did you think of this book, Shujana? Very personally, I think a little bit of lucky because from my childhood, I was really small when I started to talk to my spirit guides. I always closed my eyes and then when I wanted to ask something, I opened up a, a, a beautiful uh, lightning tunnel on the top of my head and I could immediately connect to my spirit guides. But I know that sometimes it's not so easy to others. So this book gives a very nice and very good guideline to everyone how to connect your spirit guides. Or for example, what I really like uh, to ask an MBO, a most benevolent outcome, for example, if you wanna open up a new parking space or whatever you just want, and it works. She, she always does that. We'll be traveling somewhere <laughs> and uh, we're trying to get you know on time to catch a plane or a, a spot and she'll ask for that most benevolent outcome. And uh, it always works uh, when you put it out there. Uh, it's just like uh, Dr. Anne-Marie Evers, who I'd like to have on to talk to all of you. She's uh, written books on affirmations and angels. And she talks about these things called angel letters. And she's always encouraging people to write these angel letters and they always get answers to them. But again, here is book number four. Even though I've kind of broken the pattern and throw in throwing in a few extras in there. I mean, that's what we have to do. Okay, so book number three, this is one of the most influential, interesting books I have ever read on, on metaphysics, the occult, strange mysteries. I've written about this in, in the new book I have coming out. My Uncle Richard growing up, he was a, a very fascinating, interesting individual and he told me that he had this one book in the 1970s that he picked up that uh, you could probably get it on Amazon today for about three dollars uh, it's been out of print for a very long time by Parker Publishing but uh, he told me that this book uh, absolutely changed his life uh, because he practiced the things in there and he got the most incredible results it was written by a man named Reese P. Dubbin and uh, this book has always fascinated me it's always intrigued me since I was uh, very young. And uh, it tells you how you can hear thought uh, by turning a transistor radio or radio down lower and lower every day until you can hear the radio when it's turned off. And it, it's interesting as I've talked to Shijana about this before, and she's met my uncle, yeah. that uh, he, he would always have his radio and TV turned down very low. And, and I would come visit there as a, at his place with my dad as a, as a child. And and uh, my dad would get very frustrated and angry with him, not angry, but say, why is your TV turned down so low that nobody could hear it? Because he was always doing this. He said he could hear people's thoughts. And he, he would tell me that he learned from here that, that thought would travel. Uh, you, know, you know, we look at radio waves or it would go below that. And um, the book also tells you how to use telehypnosis to send telepathic commands like hypnosis out through this way, uh, as well as in the book, it tells you how to manifest things very quickly by, you know, you and a group of people coming together. Uh, it tells you how to create um, a, a telecult viewer, which is rolling up a cone of paper and writing out what you want, whether it's sending telepathy to people uh, by straining the eyes, by focusing them really intently on something and sending emotion with it. Uh, it has a way for creating a sort of a spirit radio uh, to other very interesting techniques that are in there. I, I highly recommend everybody check this book out. It's very, very interesting and it's filled with all sorts of 
um, new and old concepts, but I've never seen anything quite like it. Uh, Jushana, what was your takeaway from this book? So we have already heard about that the highly intelligent extraterrestrial beings are mostly communicating in a telepathic way, right? Mm -hmm. But what I realized that actually we are also highly intelligent beings, as human beings, and we are able to do this. We are capable to do this. Um, sometimes during our daily life, we are experiencing this all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> it's definitely uh, worth to try it and follow the instructions here in the book. Oh, absolutely. And another thing with this book, um, there's something in there called solo words, which I thought were really interesting. Uh, uh, Reese P. Dubbin, who, believe me, I've tried to track this guy down. I've hired, you know, people to look him up uh, in New Jersey. I've come very close to it. He used all kinds of different names. Uh, this this company, Parker Publishing, they released all kinds of really fascinating titles in the 1970s. They were available at the back of comic books and everything. Uh, but um, he said that he found these things called solo words, which could correspond to what he called the little people or these invisible helpers. And he said that he found them by going and listening to different churches and uh, people praying in tongues that he said the tongues were like another language that could be deciphered. All kinds of really fascinating subjects in there. And my uncle actually at some point said this book frightened him because he's a very psychic individual. He's got a lot of natural abilities, but he said that he started manifesting things out of midair and um, hearing things and um, the results that he was getting were absolutely incredible. Uh, there's, there's other things in there on how to make yourself invisible by using telepathic hypnotic commands by sending them forward. So I, I think if you take a look at this book, it will fascinate uh, a, lo a lot of you. So again, that's moving down our list. So what's the next one on our list here? Here's book number four. This is Lost Secrets of the Sacred Ark by Sir Lawrence Gardner. Now, if any of you have tuned into different shows that you know we've been on like uh, Beyond Belief with George Norrie, or you've seen some of the videos we've done or been on our tours to Egypt, you will hear us talking about the white powder of gold, Mufkuts, uh, the monoatomic gold. Now, there's been other works that have looked at this. I mean, this is a great mystery that has gone back into the ancient world, going back into Tutmosis III, the uh, Great White Brotherhood, because they're eating these white cakes. Um, Lawrence Gardner, the late Lawrence Gardner, uh, who unfortunately has passed away, he took a very serious look at this and deciphering this. And this book is mind blowing. And I have it on good account that everything that he says here is true. I, uh, I know a lot of people might be skeptics uh, on the subject of white gold or mufkuts, but I'm, I'm telling you, there is a lot to this. Um, there are very interesting and well-educated, important people in the world that take this subject very seriously. And they have for a long time, you know, going back into Flinders Petrie. And when you look back at the discoveries he was doing, uh, in 1904, looking at the white gold. This is a very, very important, very interesting to what it means to the Egyptian mysteries. I believe it was one of the keys on how they were going into other dimensions and stargates. Zhuzhana, uh, what did you think of this work? Let me connect this book to an interesting story because I'm uh, working and researching a lot about the history of Hungarians and the ancient Huns. And... Um, what, as far as I know, that there was the huge Hun alliance, the Hungarian Hun alliance, uh, who were actually existing in the same time with the ancient Egyptian, uh, ancient Egyptians, but uh, they were different civilizations. I mean, different uh, empires, but uh, they definitely had a very good uh, connection, and they were supporting each other. So. For example, after uh, the sources, what I had, um, it says that uh, when uh, the people from Atlantis starting to attack Egypt, uh, they uh, sent, for example, the Covenant of Ark to the territory of the Hun Alliance here into the Carpathian basins. Absolutely. And there's a lot of those connections. We Another show we will do with all of you are the mysteries of the, the Hungarians 
the, the Magyar, the Hun Alliance, and the Transylvanian Sphinx. And uh, as Jujana can tell you, when we look up even at the Transylvanian Sphinx and the Transylvanian Sunrise series by Radu Sinemar and Peter Moon, they talk about there being mufkuts or white gold that was discovered up there. Uh, and I mean, we're going to get into some deep stuff with all of you on that with uh, who Zalmaxis was talking to the sky gods, uh, working with the ancient Dacians, how that connects into Herodotus's book four of the histories. But I mean, there's a whole lot there, as she mentioned, that we can get into that relates to this. But absolutely fascinating stuff. Uh, be sure to pick this book up if you've never read it before. Thank you very much. Now on to book number one. This is number one on the list, the most important book. I think everybody has to have this in their collection. Can any of you guess what it is? The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. Now, I can't say enough about Manly P. Hall. Now, Manly Palmer Hall, uh, again, was originally born a Canadian and he later moved to California where he opened up PRS, the Philosophical Research Society, and it was in Los Feliz, California. He wrote over 150 books, did over 8,000 extemporaneous lectures at the top of his head. You know, this is someone who wrote countless articles. He was prolific. I think he far surpassed uh, Plato, Aristotle, and Socrates. And I want Jujana just to stop here for just a moment so we can show you why this edition is so popular and important. Now, the, this book here, the, I, I can't tell you how important this book is. I've spent my whole life studying it since I was a teenager. You have to have it in your book collection. Now, this edition, there, there are multiple editions you can get of it, but you want to get one of the larger editions that you can get directly from PRS. You can order it from them online, but on Amazon or your nearby bookstore, you get these abridged versions, these smaller versions. Um, they're all right, but you want to get this copy. Uh, all, many of our sitting presidents of the United States have had this copy on their shelf. Every Masonic Lodge has a copy of this book. This book uh, was sought after by the likes of even Elvis Presley, who waited around the corner to try to get a copy. Um, there was people trying to hear Manly speak all the time. This, this page that Jujana just stopped on here is very important because this is connected to the legend that the true identity of William Shakespeare is none other than Sir Francis Bacon. And the idea in the Baconian ciphers and mysteries is that, uh, that really he encoded all sorts of different ideas about the new Atlantis. But because he was born Sir Francis Tudor, he was the bastard son of Queen Elizabeth. He wasn't able to come out and really show his true identity. I mean, we have to keep in mind that Shakespeare was a Stratford man that could barely spell his own name. So how are we supposed to expect that he's, you know, putting out all these profound uh, ideas that we see in the works of Shakespeare. But again, if you get this edition, I love this, that you have this overlay that you can see Shakespeare in the background and we put bacon uh, over top, but the illustrations are gorgeous in there. Uh, when you look at how beautiful they are, you want to get this edition. It's much easier to read. I recommend getting like a, a place to place, put it on in your office or an area that you can read through it. It's a gorgeous book, highly recommended for everyone. And while we're still on this subject, people always ask me, what are my favorite Manly P. Hall books? Um, well, this being the most important, uh, I have scoured everywhere to get every Manly P. Hall book I could get my hands on. Uh, I'm sure I have, you know, close to all of them ever written, but every once in a while, I'm surprised by something that I don't have. Now, I want to say that there was a Manly P. Hall book that Jujana surprised me with as a gift recently. She got me a signed copy of it, which was great. Uh, this, one's, this one's great. It's a collection of his essays. It's called The Search for Reality. And can you show everyone the signature by Manly? Right here, you see that the master himself signed it, which I love. But this, this is so important, this book, if you can get your hands on it. It's got the greatest essays for today. If you look at it, we have The Dark Night of the Soul. Uh, we have another area called In Each Individual Born with a Purpose. Another essay from 1960s was Wisdom Beyond the Mind. All of this stuff is so important right now for the transformation of what we're going through. Uh, I'm just wondering, 
while I show the next book, Shujana, do you want to read out the quote that's here? Actually, right here, we just flipped it open. This is one of uh, Shujana's favorite pieces from here. Yes. So it says, human beings live and die. Such come and go. Empires rise and fall, but love is eternal. The growth and maturing of love is one of the greatest works of man, his greatest offering to the universe. In the recognition and cultivation of this work, he attains true religion, and by this attainment, he becomes capable of making a good word for himself and others. I love that. I love that. Love is eternal. Uh, what, what's your favorite part about this book i mean what what's your takeaway what i really love in this book that this is an amazing guide to yourself um, um grows how you can evolve on your life path it's an amazing thing and i really love when we every day actually open it open up uh, different parts and it's somehow it always connects to our day I, <laughs> and I, gives a guidance i agree <laughs> The, the other book we do that with, uh, this is a book I always travel with, and I, I recommend this one to everyone. This little book over here, uh, do you want to pull that out? This is, a, this is a summation of Manly P. Hall wisdom teachings of not only life, philosophy, um, so many different subjects, esoteric stuff, mysteries, religion, uh, Atlantis. This is Think on These Things. And it was compiled by Clark E. Johnston, who is a, a friend of Manly P. Hall's. And if you flip it open, just flip open something in here, you'll see these sections is divided up. These are just little paragraphs and passageways of just random Manly P. Hall wisdom. And uh, the book was compiled by his friend that just went through, you know, the years of what he was talking about and put it into this book. And it's such a gem. Uh, again, I highly recommend you you get this book. I've given this to people when they say to me, they're like, well, what Manly B. Hall book should I start on? And, you know, Secret Teachings of All Ages is sort of like the Bible. Uh, the Bible, uh, you know, I kind of get a kick out of it when people say they read the Bible from front to back, like cover to cover. Secret Teachings of All Ages, you know, I have read it uh, front to back, you know, several times, but I find it most of the time you read it in, in passageways and you read it in sections and you digest it. This, the same is with that. This is a book where you just get these profound aspects of wisdom. So we'll often do this that uh, over breakfast or at night, yeah. uh, Jujana will flip it open. She'll say, yes. well, she'll read it open. Isn't it, it this, always? This is extremely inspirational. And this is a must <laughs> to have. <laughs> it's a must. So there you have it. Uh, aside from a, a few other ones we threw in, you know, those are our top five for today. I want to hear from all of you. What are your top five favorite books? Uh, have you read any of these? Uh, and Jujana, do you have anything you want to leave everyone with before we go? I would like to wish you a great and amazing day today and think about these things. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you all for checking out our first episode and we look forward to talking to you all again.